The ceremony was... degrading. Let's not revisit that. But we all took part in it. Not really wholesome family activity, but I guess it's something you do when you give yourselves to a Daedric Lord. In today's video, we're going to do a deep dive into why you shouldn't use mods or console commands to marry Serana in Skyrim. Serana is one of the most popular followers in the game, thanks to the Dawnguard DLC, and we've seen a lot of interest from players who want to take the relationship further through marriage. However, Serana has a unique character and backstory that make marriage inappropriate for role-playing purposes. We'll fully explain our reasoning. Looking at Serana's character development, the implications of marrying a vampire, and the logical flaws with forcing a marriage instead of appreciating her companionship. There's a lot to cover, so let's jump right in. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoy Skyrim content. Serana has over 600 lines of unique dialogue, and her personality is conveyed through these interactions with the player. She's intelligent, witty, cynical, and conflicted about her vampirism. Her dialogue focuses on philosophical insights about mortality, metaphysics, ethics, and the nature of time. Romance is never brought up or hinted at. In fact, she interacts with the Dragonborn in an intimate but platonic way, as a mentor and close friend. She'll express concern for their safety, surprise if they make moral choices, and curiosity about their opinions on vampirism. Nobody's ever asked me that before. I... I don't know. I think... mostly I hate what it's done to my family. But she never flirts, swoons, or acts fascinated by the player's charm or physicality. Forcing a marriage onto this character goes completely against how the writers crafted Serana's personality. It's painfully obvious from the very nuanced dialogue that she was created as a companion first and foremost, not a romantic interest. She behaves as a good friend would, not a prospective bride. Delving into Serana's backstory provides more context as to why she shouldn't hastily enter a marriage with the Dragonborn. As an ancient vampire, Serana has a complicated history with her abusive father Harkon and conflicts about her vampirism. She was locked away by her own parents in a tomb for centuries, then finally gained freedom after the Dawnguard DLC only to find her father corrupted by prophecy. Harkon manipulates Serana trying to use her blood to fulfill his obsession. This shows that Serana has spent most of her long life isolated and controlled by her family. And after dealing with so much trauma surrounding her parents, the last thing she would want is to be chained down again in a new, forced relationship right after gaining independence. The ceremony was... degrading. It was expected of her. It's definitely been a bad thing, on the whole. Tradition dictates the females be offered to Molig Ball on his summoning day. Few survive the ordeal. Marriage undermines her entire character arc. She suffered manipulation and control from parental figures in the past. Now she needs time to figure out her own path. Serana even says as much when expressing that she wants her life to be her own after defeating Harkon. Rushing into marriage contradicts all the personal growth Serana went through. She's an abuse survivor reclaiming freedom, not a doting spouse. There are also a lot of logical flaws that arise if you use mods to marry Serana in-game. Firstly, the fact she's a vampire means she can't conceive children. Several Elder Scrolls games establish this as law. So there goes the chance of passing on your legacy, or establishing a family with Serana. Not exactly ideal for a Skyrim playthrough where you might be excited about adoption, or having your spouse move into one of the player homes. Serana would have to awkwardly hang out in any kitchen or bedroom you added without using them. And because Serana is undead, your marriage would literally last forever. Or at least until you got bored and used cheats or mods to kill off or cure your eternally youthful vampire wife. That certainly throws any role playing out the window. Not to mention the challenges of a human vampire relationship. Does Serana bite you? Do you have to wear armor to bed so she doesn't feast on you while you sleep? I hope you're okay with a liquid diet because Serana will keep any kitchen stocked with blood potions and raw meat. It's definitely unconventional. She won't cook you any meals besides bloody tartare. And you'll have to deal with random attacks from Dawnguard vampire hunters wanting to kill your undead spouse. That's no way to live a normal life together. The only way to make marriage work would be curing Serana's vampirism. There you are. I'm back. All 
clean. I feel like I can breathe again for the first time since I was turned. The world is alive. And so am I for once. Forcing marriage onto a vampire follower creates way too many practical problems from housing and feeding to socializing. The relationship would never work. She's done being manipulated and controlled. She needs time for self-reflection and to come to terms with her traumatic childhood. Serana says as much herself in dialogue. Marriage would chain her down all over again. And while Serana cares about and supports the Dragonborn in a platonic way, she likely has no interest in being forced into yet another situation where someone else makes major life decisions for her. Her dialogue makes it clear she's not looking for romantic love right now, she's looking for purpose. Oh, what is it? Oh, I get it. Is that why you're wearing an amulet of Mara? Look, you're great, really. But I just don't think that's for us. Especially not me. I mean, with my history, I still kind of get a chill walking by a temple. Can't imagine going in one. Marriage undermines all of that. Some players argue that Serana hints at affection and romantic interest at times. But when examining the dialogue, this isn't really the case. She cares about the Dragonborn, but in the same way she might care about any close friend after going through intense hardships together. Her loyalty comes from friendship, not passion. Other followers like Ayla make their romantic interest very overt, through flirtatious and admiring dialogue. But Serana does no such thing. She gently pokes fun at the player and debates philosophy. She doesn't fawn over their battle prowess or rugged good looks. And she certainly never talks about settling down. Any perceived romance comes from players projecting onto Serana, not anything she actually says or does. It's understandable to admire her complexity as a character, but acting on that with forced marriage goes too far. In the end, Betraying Serana's personal growth and freedom by forcing a ring on her finger is the opposite of what a true friend should do. It imposes your own selfish wishes over her personal path to healing. And that's the strongest argument against marrying Serana. While Serana is a beloved companion, marriage simply makes no sense given her personality, background and state as a vampire. It goes against the very spirit of free will and independence Serana fought so hard for. There are plenty of better spouse candidates out there. We highly recommend appreciating Serana's strengths as a platonic follower, not trying to force a doomed marriage just because she's pretty. Value her for the things that make her unique. Let me know what you think. Would you marry Serana if you could? Or do you agree the companionship fits her character better? We welcome thoughts in the comments as always. And be sure to subscribe for more Elder Scrolls discussions. Thanks for watching.